Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, we will focus on the stadiums that will host the second zone of the Argentinian second division, formerly known as Primera Nacional. Some of the most historic Argentinian football ground and teams will participate in this tournament, so without any further ado, let's get started. The Estadio Centenario Ciudad de Quilmes is a football stadium located in Quilmes, Buenos Aires. The stadium, owned by Quilmes Atletico Club, has a capacity of 35,200 people and opened in 1995. Quilmes holds several records. Founded in 1887, it is the oldest club in Argentina still competing in professional championships. It is the club that has been demoted the most in Argentine soccer history with 12 relegations. On the other hand, it has 11 promotions, which is also a record. The team has won the first division twice in 62 appearances and also has 65 participations in the second division. The Estadio El Coliseo is located in the town of Campana in Buenos Aires. It is owned by the Villa Dalmin Club and was inaugurated in 1961 with a capacity of 12,000 spectators. The club has participated 13 times in the Argentinian second division. The Estadio Ciudad de Caseros is a football stadium in Buenos Aires. The stadium holds 16,740 people and was opened in 1963. Since then, it is the home stadium of Club Atlético Estudiantes. Founded in 1898, the club has spent 31 years in the first division. The club has 44 appearances in the second division. The Estadio 20 de Octubre is located in the town of Tristan Suarez in Buenos Aires. It opened in 1964 and has a capacity of 7,500. It is the home to Tristan Suarez. The club gained its first promotion to the second division in 2021. The Estadio Bautista Gargantini is located in Mendoza. It opened in 1925 and can hold 24,000 people. It is the home ground for Independiente Rivadavia. The club has never played in the first division and is a constant member of the second division since 2006. The Estadio Lorenzo Arandilla is located in Adroga, in Buenos Aires. It was inaugurated in 1947 and it has a capacity of 4,500. It is owned by the club Atletico Brown. The club has spent nine seasons in the second division starting in 2013. The Estadio Nuevo Monumental is located in the city of Rafaela. It can hold up to 20,660 spectators. And since its inauguration in 1954, it is the home to Atletico Rafaela. Despite the fact that it was founded in 1907, the club's first appearance in the second division was in 1989. Since then, Rafaela has played eight times in the first division and 27 times in the second division. The Estadio Doctores José y Antonio Castiglione is located in the city of Santiago del Estero. It opened in 1919 and has a 20,000 seats capacity. It is owned by the football club Atlético Mitra. The club was founded in 1907 and plays in the second division since 2017. The Estadio Guillermo Laza is located in the city of Buenos Aires. It opened in 1993 with 3,000 seat capacity and is the home to Deportivo Ristra. The club started participating in the National B in 2017. The Estadio Omar Higinio Spaduti is located in the city of Maipú in Mendoza province. It opened in 1932 and can hold 8,000 spectators. It is the home ground of Deportivo Maipú, which has spent nine years in the Argentinian second division. The Estadio Abel Sastre is located in Puerto Madryn in Chubut province. It is the newest stadium in the league as it opened in 2006. With 6,000 seat capacity, it is the home to Deportivo Madryn. The club gained its first promotion to the second division in 2021. The Estadio Miguel Sancho is located in the city of Córdoba. It opened in 1948 and can hold 15,000 spectators. The stadium is home to the Racing de Córdoba, who have played in the first division 16 times, being the runner-up in 1980. The club has returned this year to the second division after almost 20 years of absence. This will be their eighth year in the competition. 
The Estadio 23 de Agosto is a football stadium in San Salvador de Jujuy. It opened in 1973 and has 23,000 seat capacity after being renovated to host matches for the 2011 Copa America. The stadium is the home to Gimnasia y Esgrima de Jujuy. The club has participated in 18 seasons of the Primera Division and 23 times in the Second Division. The Estadio Arquitecto Ricardo Echeverri is a football ground located in Buenos Aires. Inaugurated on the 2nd of January 1905, it is the oldest football stadium in Argentina and the second oldest in South America. It now has 24,442 seat capacity and it is home to Ferro Carol Oeste. The club is one of the 18 founding teams of the first professional Argentinian championship in 1931. Ferro has played 80 times in the Primera Division, being the champions twice. Since 2000, the club has been playing in the second division. The Estadio Juan Alberto Garcia is located in the city of Resistencia. It opened in 1960 and can hold 23,000 people. It is the home ground of the local football club Chaco Forever. The club has had two seasons at the Argentinian top level in its history. The Estadio de Chacarita Juniors is a stadium located in the Villa Maipú district of Buenos Aires. Inaugurated in 1945 and rebuilt in 2011, it is the home venue of Chacarita Juniors and can hold 19,000 people. The club has spent 61 seasons in the first division, being the champions in 1969. Chacarita has also played 34 times in the second division. The Estadio José María Minela is located in the city of Mar del Plata and was opened for the 1978 FIFA World Cup. Currently it serves as the home ground for the clubs Alvarado and Aldo Civi. Aldo Civi has participated 10 times at the top level. They have relegated the last season and this will be their 16th season in the second division. Lastly, we have the Estadio Don Leon Kolbowski, which is located in the Villa Crespo neighborhood of Buenos Aires. Built in 1960, the stadium is able to hold 18,000 people. It is owned and operated by Club Atletico Atlanta. The club has spent 64 seasons in the first division, with the last being in 1984. Atlanta has also participated 25 times in the second division. Thank you for watching my video. If you liked it, make sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to stay updated on new content. And if you have any questions or ideas for future videos, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, take care.